Yes, hello, McLaren. Wow. Let's face it, moments like this don't come along too often, so I'm taking you along this journey as I go about it. Every, this is the first time I've stepped foot in this thing, so I'm just taking on board all of the incredible sculpture. So here we are. Welcome to the interior of the somewhat controversial, somewhat absolutely ridiculous McLaren Senna. Up until this point we have known it by its uh, internal code name, the P15. In fact, I've known it for P15 so long that uh, even though it's now called the Senna, I still keep referring to it as the P15. Anyway, we are sat in what uh, the industry has began referring to this bracket of car as a hypercar. And I guess I want to sort of set the context of it as to what sets a supercar and a hypercar apart. Well, for me, to give it some context, I'm actually going to give you some information about the things that you actually don't see. Um, in order to just, before we go into the really fine details of this car, almost set up your mindset for just the uh, level, the bracket of machinery we are sat in right now. So, two things. The first thing is the brakes on this car. Um, it is an entirely new carbon formula. I'm not sure if it's ever been seen on a road car before, but it's definitely new to McLaren. The significance of it is that each disc, each single disc brake takes seven months to produce. You heard that right. Everything, not, not a set of brakes per disc takes seven months to produce. And the other thing that has immediately came to mind upon me opening my mouth as soon as I sat in here, which is another intangible quality that you cannot see, is the resonance and reverberation of my voice off the inside of this cabin before we've even turned this thing on. It has a resonance that just suggests it is like a racing mosquito. It, it feels light to sit in its stationery. It's, it's hard to explain, but the way that I can, I can hear the resonance of my vocal cords bouncing off these panels, I can tell that it's hollow. It is a stunning thing. Now, talking about weight, uh, I'm going to connect, and again, this is all about setting context uh, as to why this thing is now part of McLaren's Ultimate Series. So just to give you guys an understanding of where this car sits within the McLaren lineup, there's Sports Series, Super Series, and Ultimate Series. Sports Series is the 570S family. Um, Super Series is the 720S, and the Ultimate Series is up until this car, McLaren P1. Now then, I think it's important to say that this car is not to be confused as a P1 successor. The reason for that is, uh, this is entirely focused to be a track car. Now, it just so happens that it wears a set of number plates and you can drive it to the track. However, the more I tell you, the more you'll understand what this thing is about. And what that was coming round to when I originally started talking was the overall weight and the connection with downforce of this car. Now, the dry weight is just under, under 1200 kilograms. Now, it's easy to throw these figures around, but what of course is uh, connected to all of that is monumental downforce and power that, again, needs contextualizing uh, in order for me and you to wrap your brain around. So the rear wing combined with the overall aero and the active aero on the front and the front splitter um, adds up to 800 kilograms of downforce. Yeah. <laughs> so effectively, this car generates over half of its overall weight in downforce. You're really getting into the realms of real track performance downforce here. I mean, the wing on this, it, I think it's probably one of the single largest components on this car, and yet it weighs just under five kilograms. You've seen the size of it. You could land an aeroplane on it. It's absolutely huge. In fact, said aeroplane could have its own wing substituted with that wing. It is colossal. Of course, linked up to loads of fancy active and reactive aerodynamics. But the impressive thing about it is it's capable of standing 100 times its own weight just on the wing 
alone. So this thing, you're starting to build up a picture that it is all about the relentless pursuit of track performance in a car that which can be homologated for the road. And really, it's only the fact that this thing wears number plates and that you can legally drive it on the road that has compromised it at all in terms of the way that it is focused on applying performance on circuit. So speaking of stripping weight, just the seats, just over three kilograms, three kilograms a seat, guys. When you see it, it is essentially a carbon skin. That edge that you can see there, that isn't just the edge of this shoulder shrouding. That is the thickness of the entire seat. The engineers here got to a stage where they were literally challenged to the point of we cannot strip any more weight out of this car if we want it to stay road legal. And so that they sat back and thought about it for a while. And just by the subtle move of replacing hex heads to button heads on the overall bolt system was reduced by 33 so we're talking, you know, grams, but this is the relentless pursuit of weight saving that McLaren have gone through in order to make this thing so lightweight. Now, I mentioned when I got in the car, uh, the car was originally codenamed the P15 and it's now incredibly branded Senna. Now, that is such an accolade. For those of you who don't know, um, Ayrton Senna was one of McLaren's, if not McLaren's all-time greatest driver. Him and Alan Prost were responsible for a magnificent season of 15 out of 16 Formula One wins in one season. And so for them to apply the Senna name to this car embodies the entire ethos of it, really without me having to talk about all of the stuff that I've just spoken about. Uh, the idea is that it is pure thoroughbred track performance. Okay, now let's cover off the uh, controversial launch of this car, predominantly to do with the aesthetics. Um, now, as a general rule, cars just look much better in person than they do on photographs. We're in this era now where car launches tend to get launched by someone in the crowd on their mobile phone in poor lighting and then it goes around the internet like wildfire and the first pictures that people see of these cars are pretty cruddy phone pictures. However, I have to say, in terms of comments online, this has to be one of the most controversial cars that has launched in a very long time. Aesthetically, it does look better in person. Overall, it does actually look fantastic. However, I still can't my eyes still can't warm to the side profile of it. It still looks a bit imbalanced. The thing is, when you understand what the car is, uh, it is pure form follows function. McLaren, as I'm sure you've acknowledged by now, every single component on this car has a reason to exist. There's nothing here for show. And I think this car embodies the function more than the form, more than anything else. As a result, we're reading these figures, like these stats and figures of this car, are just absurd. I mean, it truly is numbers which are typically reserved for race car speeds. Um, but yeah, you know, when it launched, aesthetically not great. In person, I would say the majority of the angles on this car do look cool, but for me, side profile still looks imbalanced and a bit weird. I've got a feeling when I'm behind the wheel of this thing, I am not going to care. I think it's just going to be absurd. So one of the comparisons that has been made is that it basically looks like a 720S with a body kit on it. When you really stand back and look at it, the only similarities really are the fact that the headlights kind of look similar. When I tell you this is an entirely new car, uh, it doesn't even share the same tub which is incredible because obviously McLaren have put a huge amount of R&D into making Mono Cage 2, which is in the 720S. When they launched the pictures of that chassis, it was just engineering porn. And everyone, I think, when they first saw pictures of this thought, oh, it's just an augmented 720S. This is an entirely new chassis. I'm surprised at that. I honestly thought they were gonna augment Mono Cage 2, but this is Mono Cage 3. It is entirely its own dedicated platform. The benefits of which, obviously huge weight saving because it's carbon. However, what is unique to Mono Cage 3, it basically has a dual layer carbon skin. The benefits of that is, obviously this is a super track focused car. And you'll notice there is not a roll cage in sight. The dual layering of the carbon tub makes this thing so strong that there was no need to have a 
roll cage for it. Uh, as a result, while there is basically no space to store anything in this car, again, totally focused on going fast, uh, not uh, carrying bags, they have been able to engineer spaces in the back which are specifically designed for helmets for driver and passenger. Otherwise, this sort of area here would be full of roll cage. Going back to weight and power, the car is 659 brake horsepower per tonne, okay? Uh, it's coming in at just under 800 horsepower overall power, but 659 brake horsepower per tonne, again, let's give it some context. If you watch this channel regularly, you've probably come across me driving the McLaren 720S quite often. I truly believe that when you get behind the wheel of that car, you should have to go for a separate driving license to deal with the amount of power and torque and overall ease of accessibility to performance that car has. Now, for some context relating back to this thing, um, the 720S has just around 500 brake horsepower per ton, okay? It is categorically one of the fastest cars I have ever driven. I liken it to a supercar that blurs the lines and truly overlaps into hypercar territory so at 500 brake horsepower per ton. This has 659 brake horsepower per ton. Yeah. So earlier on when I got in and I was like, what is the difference here? What is it that elevates a car from supercar to hypercar bracket or in McLaren's um, essence, what is it that goes from super series to ultimate series? It's everything I've just mentioned. It's actually more about the things you can't see than the things that you can. Speaking of the things you can, I have Andy Palmer here from McLaren to talk us around some of the intricate details and exterior styling and hopefully some stories we don't know about yet. We've seen the front wing. <laughs> that, is, uh, that is the front wing. That weighs 660 grams. Um, I wish, comparable to a... I wish you could feel this. <laughs> I mean, it's like... Yeah, it is. Great almost it's A 570 in aluminium, which is still, uh -huh. again, very light, light. is 2.2 kilos. But I mean, we've engineered that, that. so in terms of it, the way it's constrained, the way it's mounted, it's still yep. a very stiff. It passes yep. all our, our palm printing and dimpling tests. Um, but yeah, very, and that goes through the entire car. Wow. All right, as mentioned inside, I'm here with Andy Palmer. He's vehicle line director of Ultimate Series. And this is your newest installation of it, Ultimate Series. It is, it's, uh, it's the center. Firstly, welcome to the, this special area of McLaren that not a lot of people get to, uh, get to see. Uh, it gives us the opportunity to showcase the car um, to customers and, um, and the likes of uh, your good self. So yeah, it's, it's our new car, the Senna. Been in development about two years now. So we started with a brief in uh, the beginning of 16 and that whole intent was setting up a car that enabled us, I suppose, to express um, what is Ultimate Series, which is very different from sports and from Super Series, so the, the 570 and the 720. And with the Senna, we literally gave the, the engineers, the designers, and probably more important, the aerodynamicists, the ability to interpret um, those elements of, of physics or aerodynamics into a car. Um, and what I mean by that is, is the surface and, and what you're seeing now is very much focused around ultimate track yeah. times, ultimate downfalls, um, and I suppose driver engagement, which is yeah. probably what all McLarens is, is really about. Two things from my standpoint, obviously up until this moment, I've only seen pictures of it, yep. which from an, from an aero sculpture point of view, do not do it justice. The amount of scoops and flares yep. on it are, are mad. For those who, who do get the chance to see it, and, and very soon obviously when we, when we launch it at the various motor shows, I think you'll appreciate and understand what we've done with, with the detail on the car. Mm. From the moment the air hits the front splitter, the way it goes over the car, goes around the car, the way it feeds the radiators, the low and the high temperature reds, and obviously the way mm. it hits and works with the aerodynamic devices. It's very much focused, and not only on the exterior, as you say, on the interior. Mm. We've, we've put a cabin inside, and the design of the interior that was focused around the driver, that he or she, when she's there on the track, they're mm. focused on you know, the, the best possible lap time. And that's why the, the, the interior is quite minimalistic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exciting. Exciting looking car, yeah. and, and, and more importantly, 
even great to drive, which I, I bet, yeah. you'll, you'll experience soon, no doubt. Absolutely, yeah. So it's, its fundamental platform is based around Rhino Cage 3 now. Correct. So, so how yeah. far has that evolved from 2? A, a, a lot. So what, what we've done, if I, if I go and open the car. Sure. So as we've said, all carbon fiber. Um, mm. the, the, the monocage, the center part essentially of the car. So we have the carbon fiber tub that's mm. been on every McLaren all the way back to about 1981. But what we've done, we've integrated in this bulkhead, this section. So unlike 720, where you've got obviously no visible or limited visible mm -hmm. engine on, on display, what we've done here, we've exposed the engine a little bit more. We've put in this, this integrated roll cage um, and we've made basically a more stiffer upper mm. structure. When this car launched, and again, I think this is predominantly from people only seeing pictures of it. And yep. I think actually it's only the, the headlights. I think people have gone, 720. Yep. You know, I've been around this car for one hour now. Yep. Even I can't stress how different it is, <laughs> you know, compared to it. Yeah. The heart of it? The heart, the engine, it's, mm -hmm. it's the four liters. So it's mm. based on the, the engine mm. that we got in the 720. But once again, the engineers have gone through that. They've looked at what we can do to make it as light as we can. Um, as most the power, the torque, 800 PS, 800 newton meters of torque, and I suppose the most obvious thing, James, is is when you look on the top of the engine, you see you see the plenum, the carbon fiber yeah. plenum, um, various elements on that. But again, weight it saves I think about two kilos over what okay. we own the 720. Mm. But clearly, more expensive for us to engineer, to develop, mm. and and to manufacture. So we're appropriately standing by this. <laughs> Massive wing. Yep. Um, talk me through the active aero. I believe this talks with the it, front. It does. Yeah. So we've we've got we've got the rear wing, mm -hmm. um, like like it's, we've done in the past, like huge. I suppose on like on your LT on uh -huh. uh, on uh, on P1. Um, yeah. We've put this wing on, demonstrate, and, and and the wing is there, pretty much like everything I suppose at McLaren. It, mm. It's there for a purpose. And that purpose is the maximum downforce. The position of the wing, the size of the wing, the shape of the wing is all there to provide us exactly what we want from a downforce perspective. You could um, have a family picnic on this. You could, it, yes. It, it is colossal. So it's it's yeah. very useful for, for, uh -huh. for that. Um, but <laughs> in conjunction with, with the front active aero, which uh -huh. we'll take a look at in a moment, sure. this, this gives us um, 800 kilos of downforce um, at 250 kph huge amount of downforce the car now is a, again a development from from what we learned on p1 uh -huh. so from drag reduction the wing is active as we said so it can it can change its angle of attack uh -huh. based on what it wants to do whether it wants to throw off drag right. or give sure. more downforce yeah so this can come up under braking and, and then obviously reduce in a drs form uh -huh. um, to throw off drag and make it as uh, streamlined as we can um, is the exhaust positioned like that just to look awesome, or does it have any blown? It, it doesn't. It doesn't blow. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't blow the wing. It, it's positioned, for, for, I suppose, for two reasons. It's positioned to allow the exhaust air to exit and not necessarily interrupt what's mm -hmm. going on with the free stream air that's coming around here. Yeah. But also, it enabled us to push the lower section, the trailing edge of the car, as low as we can. By result, the exhaust I was going to say, it's OK to cool. say it looks awesome, it's just because it looks awesome. <laughs> but it's, yeah, it's for yeah. a reason. Sure. Um, it yeah. is for a reason. Yeah. You look at the front, and on this particular car, the Victory Grey mm. car, we, we highlight these elements in orange, but the customer can choose okay. any colour that, that they desire. But in the front there is an active aero wing um, right. that, that's controlled by essentially a series of motors that enables us to control downfalls can we can demonstrate that and control that by the pitch so a pretty unique feature and not something that i've seen on a modern day yep. car anyway the side door glass again is that there for a reason or are we just looking awesome again <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's both, maybe both. Okay, um, yeah, yeah we, we we put that in again uh -huh. um visibility key yeah. element of, of of mclaren of any mclaren um mm. and that driver visibility mm. and, and that focus um actually by by needing the shape of the door and the flow of the air into the high temperature rad, we really had to push this surface in, which constrained us a little bit for package on the window regulator, mm -hmm. um, which then 
enabled us to take this nice link back to F1. F1, I was going to say that. Uh, with a half, like drop, half drop glass, yeah. um, which again it's is a cool, cool feature. But it enabled us then to say, hey, this part of the door is not really being used. Um, cool. Why don't we? Why not? Why don't? And, and you can show off your posh sound system. Exactly, posh shower bowels and wheel consistent. We're at it. Yeah. We were actually running a, a mule. Probably it was about <laughs> two years ago. We had a, we had a 12C mule running around with a piece of glass in <laughs> cool. it, yeah. um, just to uh, just to see what that that. But when you drive the car and you, and you position it on the track or on the road, yeah. it really enables you to, I suppose, to get that yeah. last, I say, centimeter, whatever, yeah. of, of positioning. <laughs> yes, it's distinctly a different breed, isn't it? It is a different breed. Wow. Yeah, I can't Brilliant. wait for you to drive it Absolutely. as well. well give me, give me your feedback. You you're, you're more than welcome anytime. Appreciate your time. And, Thank uh, you. We'll see you soon. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Ciao.